Hi everyone and welcome to my third video as part of the guest design team for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft and I'm looking forward to sharing with you a piece of artwork with the new year in mind and all of the products that I've used to create this chalkboard effect are listed over on the Faber-Castell blog and you'll find the link to that blog post in the description box below this video. So this is the piece of artwork I'm going to show you how to create. I love this chalkboard finish and I had great fun using mixing and matching the Faber-Castell products in order to achieve this look. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, but don't forget you can use quotes that will inspire you. I picked out two that I thought I could hang in my craft room to give me a little bit of a push when I need it to have a great adventure and try to achieve my dreams and that is what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you exactly how to achieve this look so that you can create some inspirational artworks for yourself with the upcoming new year in mind. So I'm going to be working on the reverse of a box canvas. So I'm working on the canvas upside down, so to speak. The actual canvas itself is against my desk and I'm going to be using that um, wooden frame as the actual frame for this piece of artwork. And I want to create a lovely chalkboard effect. So I'm starting out by covering everything with the chalkboard paint by Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. Brand new. It's quite a runny paint so give it a little bit of a shake before you start and it's got great coverage even though I had a brown canvas on this frame uh, where I'm covering the white on the inside of the frame I actually didn't use any gesso I probably could have done and sealed that underside of the canvas before I started but I only used two coats to get the depth of colour that I wanted and it really dries to a lovely chalky matte finish. So no special tips or tricks to share with you here other than it is quite messy so uh, I start out by not using a um, messy mat on top of my cutting mat and then uh, change my mind because uh, I know there's going to be a massive cleanup with all of this black chalkboard paint. So I'm covering every single area of the what I'm going to call from now on the frame parts of this canvas, including the inside, which you will be able to see as your artwork is hung on the wall. So spend a little bit of time making sure that you cover everything that you can see with this lovely black paint. So I'm using one of the brushes that comes in the toolkits, but you could use a bigger brush if you wanted to make things go faster. And I am using a couple of finer brushes because I've got a few little nooks and crannies that uh, this works better at than the little stubby brush that I'm using for the rest of the canvas. And you will need to spend a little bit of time making sure that um, if you're using the reverse of a canvas or any canvas really it's got quite a textured surface just make sure that you cover all of this with the paint and it's always best to do two thin coats rather than one great big thick coat uh, definitely dries quicker and you'll get a smoother finish by applying two thin coats you can add a third if you want to but i found that two was enough before I go on with the rest of this voiceover, I'm just going to let you know that I have had a problem with the sound on this video. So I'm hoping to do the majority of the voiceover for the rest of this video on just a couple of takes. So I'll do my best not to make too many mistakes, but please forgive me if there are a couple. But if not, I would have to start the whole project all over again. I've given myself three voice files, so that's uh, three chances of getting it right. So I'm going to talk to you now about how to create some some dimension on your frame that you can highlight with the chalkboard effect and I'm starting out by cutting out some chipboard strips chipboard grey board um, just slightly thicker pieces of um, cardboard so that we can create dimension on this frame so I'm not going to give you dimensions because your frame is likely to be a different size to mine I'm just going to tell you exactly what I did so that you can do similar things so I'm starting out by cutting strips that are slightly narrower than the frame on which I'm going to stick them so they're a quarter of an inch narrower than the measurement of the width of the frame so for example if your frame measured one inch you would cut some strips at three quarters of an inch 
The next thing I'm doing is using the actual mitres that already exist on the frame to mark my pieces of chipboard so that they fit nicely in each of the corners. So take a little bit of time to do this to make sure that they fit nicely and then you can go ahead and stick them to your frame. I'm using some Cosmic Shimmer PVA glue and I'm just doing my best to make sure they're stuck nice and flat against that frame and that each of those strips are central on the frame itself so that there is a little eighth of an inch step on either side of the strip. So four strips in total to make the first layer of the dimension that I will be adding to this frame. So the more time you take to make these mitres fit snugly, the nicer the effect will be when you have painted all this up and added the chalkboard effect, which will emphasise the dimension that we're going to be making. So once you've been round once, it's time to add the second set of strips. And again, I'm taking the measurement down a quarter of an inch so that when I add the strips to the top of what I've already got, there will be another eighth of an inch step on either side of the strip. So as I start to speed things up so you can uh, not fall asleep while you're watching this video, and I've been told I've got a very calming voice. You can see here I'm just taking a little bit of time to make sure that's nice and snug. And then I'm going to speed things up as we add the next layers. Now if you're working on an oblong you're obviously going to have two different measurements for the two different lengths of sides of your frame. Mine's square so I've got starting out with 12 inch strips and then cutting them down to fit. If you had an oblong you're going to have two sides that match and so two short sides and two long sides. But the process is exactly the same. You could also use a frame, a box frame that is already a box frame not an upside down uh, box frame. So it may well be that you have already got some dimensional elements on the frame that you're using, in which case you can just highlight them using the chalk technique that I'm going to show you. So this is my second layer, and you can see I'm centralizing that on top of the first layer, and I'm creating those steps. And then I'm gonna repeat the process once more with my third and final layer. Again, I'm downsizing roughly a quarter of an inch each time. Now you could add fun things like texture paste or you could um, perhaps comb the texture paste or you could put the texture paste to a stencil or you could perhaps add some lace and cover that in the chalkboard paint and then add the chalk effect to pick out the dimension that you've added. But I quite like this little technique. It's it's subtle, is what I'd call it, subtle, but it still lets you really go to town with that chalkboard finish. So this is my third layer. And then I did think about wrapping the sides, but I decided against that. And then it's on with the chalkboard paint. And again, this time I'm going to be using another two layers and being very, very careful to make sure I really get into those nooks and crannies that I've created with the black paint. So let it dry in between coats and then give it a second coat so that you get nice coverage before you start the chalkboard technique. So once I've got that layer, I'm gonna tip up my frame and check all around the edges to make sure that everything is covered with the paint. And you can see this is quite messy using this paint. Um, or is it that I'm just a messy crafter? Not sure. <laughs> I'll let you decide. While that's drying, I'm going to cover some pieces of chipboard. These are just scrap pieces of chipboard that I'm going to die cut into flowers later on. And I just want to cover them on both sides with the same chalkboard paint. 
this time I only really needed to cover the chipboard with one layer and it gave me a nice matte coverage once it was dry ready to die cut my flowers don't forget don't die cut your flowers until the paint is dry otherwise you'll have your pieces sticking to your dies or it will just tear because the chipboard is still wet you can see I'm giving myself a lovely clean up job here but I've got a little plan which I'll share with you in just a moment So as usual there's always little things that you can add and take away when you're making any of the projects that I show you. It's all about learning the techniques and then perhaps giving it your own spin. So that's why I don't really tell you exactly how many um, pieces of chipboard that you're going to need because you might change the design slightly. If you haven't painted enough just paint a bit more if you run out. That's exactly what I intend to do. Now for that lovely chalkboard finish. I'm using some gesso in order to do this so this is the Faber Castell gesso I'm using a fine paintbrush to make sure that I can get that paint into the what should I call them crevices the texture that we added with the chipboard so I'm going along those little steps that we created with the gesso and you can do sort of each set of little steps all at the same time the trick is not to let the paint dry so just add the paint and then immediately with your damp baby wipe rub the excess paint away and you will end up with a sort of chalky finish so it will, you will see that the edge of my frame will change to a chalky grey colour compared to that black in the centre of the frame and that will give us what will look like a chalkboard that's been partially cleaned and with some chalk residue left behind you know the naughty children that don't clean their blackboard properly in days gone by showing my age now because I think you only tend to have whiteboards these days <laughs> so a nice damp baby wipe just be careful of the inside edge of your frame if you are using a box frame upside down the way I am that inside edge is a little bit rough and you'll see a bit later on that I do actually manage to catch that luckily with a baby wipe but not with my fingers so I don't end up with a big splinter so just a word of warning to be a little bit careful when you're brushing or rubbing your baby wipe along that inside edge so as you can see I'm systematically going around adding the white gesso to the little step areas you probably will need more than one baby wipe because what happens is the baby wipe fills up with gesso and ends up putting on gesso rather than taking it off once that starts to happen just switch baby wipes and you're ready to go again and you'll get to see how much pressure that you need to achieve the desired look that you want you might want to leave more of the white showing or less of the white showing it really is up to you so if you're going to leave more wipe less if you're going to take away more you're going to have to wipe a few more times with your baby wipe so you can see i've worked my way around the entire frame just finishing off on the inside edge And this is where I did pull off a little bit of that wood and all I did was give it a quick little sand and then add some of the blackboard paint just to cover up the piece that I pulled off you can see there <laughs> just repairing that inside edge adding a little bit of the blackboard paint just to make it vanish once more and then the next thing that you want to do is to go around all of the remaining edges of your frame just to dusty them up a little bit and I achieve this first of all by adding just a little bit of the gesso to the frame and then washing it off again but then again once your baby wipe has enough of that gesso on it then it will act as a brush on its own and you'll be able to just gently wipe that along all the surfaces of your frame and just to turn them into that chalky dusted effect 
and you can see now I'm just adding a little bit with my baby wipe rather than with a brush just smudging that in to achieve that dusty look you can see the difference in the center to the outside and then I'm just taking a little bit of the gesso started off on the baby wipe but preferred it on my finger and then taking tiny little dots of gesso and just kind of dry brushing but using my finger along the corners just to emphasize the shape of the frame you can see that there just lightly rubbing that along each of the edges and this outside edge you can be sure that you're not going to catch your finger just be careful on the inside edges because this is actually where the canvas is wrapped around the frame it's this inside edge way just need to be a little bit more careful if you're not sure then you think your frame's a little bit too rough then don't bother with that slight inside edge And then I promised you a little clean up tip. You can see I've made a right old mess on my craft mat. So just finishing off that final inside edge. And then I'm going to be using the edge of one of my texture combs. These are also by Fabric Castell. They're great for adding texture to the whipped spackle or the texture looks you can use it on as well and I'm just using the flat edge to scrape the dried on chalkboard paint off my craft mat works a treat and you can just tip the excess in the bin and then finish off with a baby wipe you may wonder how I'm getting on with my voiceovers this is voiceover number two so I've got one left so I'm trying to make this one last as long through the video as I can without making any mistakes and now I'm going to tell you all about how to add your text if you want to use the text that I've used I will email it to you if you want me to all you have to do is visit my blog and the link is down below in the description and if you scroll down my right hand sidebar you will find the link that will allow you to email me just say Helen can I please have the pattern for the Faber-Castell uh, chalkboard canvas and I will send that to you. Alternatively you can download patterns off the internet and resize them to fit your um, canvas, the canvas that you're using or you could alternatively make your own and I made mine in Photoshop using different chalkboard fonts that I downloaded from the internet. So I decided to put two quotes onto my chalkboard because it actually works well with the effect I'm trying to create like a patchwork of words and it allowed me to split the two in half and add some further embellishments to the inside of my canvas now what I've done here is I'm just testing to see if this is going to work I've got some new um, or new to me chalk pastel pencils from Faber-Castell let me just make sure that I get the name right on those they are the mix and match pit pastel pencils they're very chalky which is why I'm using them for this project and they are permanent and light fast and it says on here I didn't really know that but you can lighten or darken your colors with neutral chalk pastels so I'm using the white from the neutral set and you can see I'm just going over the letters colouring over the letters exactly like you would with tracing paper if you were going to use that to transfer an image except I'm using the chalk to cover over the back of the image and you can see through the print to see exactly where you need the chalk just so that you don't have to cover the whole piece of paper just concentrate on where the letters are but I would be careful to make sure you get good, good coverage so that when you trace over it you get a nice defined line that you can follow on your canvas so I've done that for both pieces you will have to uh, sharpen your pastel pencil as you go and there will be a little bit of dust created so just be aware of that so I've got rid of the dust and I'm positioning now with the chalk against my canvas so I'm trying not to move them around too much so I don't rub too much of it off 
and then I'm just going to tape those in position and if I were you I'd, if you're using sort of sellotape then just take a little bit of the sticky off first by just sort of pushing it against your clothes and taking it off just to, to make them slightly less sticky so you're not going to pull the paint off your canvas and then I just use that to keep my papers in position while I trace over the letters. Now I'm using a slightly harder pencil in order to do that. I just found that it's got um, nicer pressure without sort of blunting the pencil too quickly. So this is a 2H pencil and then I'm carefully tracing over all of the letters of the quote. Now take your time when you're doing this because the, the more attention to detail, the neater you are, the nicer the line work will be on your canvas and the easier it will be to get a nice finish when you trace over it with your choice of either the chalk pastels or as I'm doing a mixture of the chalk pastels and the gesso. So I'm going to do that for both pieces. This one was a little bit more tricky because it's a finer line throughout. You can see it worked a treat. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> I wonder who said that. Oh yeah, it was somebody from the A team. Wow, showing my age there. <laughs> So like I said, lots of lovely fonts available for you to download on the internet. Uh, all of the ones that I've used were free. So, um, you know, if you want to do this with your own quotes, it was quite easy to achieve using Photoshop or you could use a similar package. So once you've traced all of your quote onto your canvas or quotes onto your canvas, you're ready to start adding a little bit more white to pick them out. So I did first of all think I might use my new pit pen. This is a big brush marker in the white. You can see it, it really is lovely and white but it was a little bit too thick for me to use uh, on the text that I'm using today. Perhaps on a big project it would have worked a treat so I'll put that to one side perhaps for some art journaling later and I'm going to be using a mixture of this chalk pencil or pastel pencil and some of the gesso and you'll see as we go along you can make the choices to get the effect you want this was me just playing to see what was going to work best for me because I really did want to be able to smudge it um, but I needed it to be a finer line I would have used that pit pen had the nib been a little bit finer so if anyone from Faber Castell is watching let's make this in a finer line pencil because it really is a lovely white opaque ink and it would have worked a treat to trace around these finer letters had the nib just been that little bit finer. <laughs> so moving on I've played enough with these new little uh, pencils that are new to my collection and now I'm going to go and work on the canvas itself. You can see I'm using a scrub of paper just to make sure I don't smudge the carefully traced image that I've already got on my canvas and then I'm tracing over my letters using that white chalk pastel pencil. Keep the pencil sharp particularly for the finer lettering and what I'm doing is going over it once and then smudging it out with my finger just to create that chalky look and then going back over it a second time for further emphasis. And this is where you can make a couple of decisions for yourself. Because I hadn't read the package like I just did <laughs> a moment ago, I didn't realise that this would be permanent once I've got this in place. Because I can smudge it, I did think it might wear away in time so that's why I decided to use the gesso to make sure that it was going to stay put for many years to come but I think actually I could have got away with just using the chalk pastel so the choice is entirely yours again just making sure I'm keeping things nice and sharp so that I get good definition on my lettering So this really is 
uh, joy to do so it's a good time to put on some nice music have a good old relax forget all your troubles and uh, all the stresses of Christmas in my case <laughs> I did finally get there but for a moment as I always do each year wasn't quite sure I was going to bring everything together <laughs> I don't know, I always think that something's going to go dreadfully wrong and I won't have a turkey or I won't have all the presents bought, etc, etc. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but we do it, don't we? We get there in the end. So this is the time to relax and enjoy your art as we go out of 2015 and into 2016. And this is a great project either for your craft room or for your home or perhaps to give to a friend that perhaps needs a little few words of inspiration for the new year. So I'm hoping the new year brings new adventures and I'm going to work hard to make a few dreams, particularly my crafting dreams, come true in 2016. Now this is where I switch over and add some definition with my gesso so I'm using a fine paintbrush and you can see I'm covering or coloring over the chalk that I've already added but I am just blotting it out a little bit so that it's not too bright so almost like smudging it a second time by just tapping over it with my finger if you can hear any beeping in the background that's my washing machine finishing off <laughs> Don't forget this is number two of my three available voiceovers to get to the end of this video. So if they're there, I'm leaving them. <laughs> so I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I think I've given you all the tips that you need in order to create this chalky effect. Now you may just have a fine white pen that you can use. I definitely would use some form of chalk and this chalk pastel pencil work to treat just to give that smudgy look to make it look like I've actually done this with chalk on a chalkboard. And it's at this point you can add some further embellishing, some doodling, and it's worth looking at some previous chalk um, artwork on the internet to give you a few ideas. And I've sort of gone with a little bit of a heart theme to start with. These are supposed to be little hearts on a stick. <laughs> I think they kind of look like that. And again, once I'd smudged out the chalky outline, then I am going over it with the gesso. Now, the beauty of these pastel pencils I discovered is if I don't get it right the first time, just wipe over it with a baby wipe. It disappears completely and I can start again, as you will see in just a moment. I was thinking that I would add um, further embellishment just by sort of doodling in this centre section. But I do change my mind, so I start out with a little design and then change my mind and then try something else and then change my mind and I end up going with adding a little bit more dimension into that centre section with some of the little flowers that I'll be showing you how to create. I left this in because it gives you a few ideas of other things that you can do if you don't like my finished design. So I'm adding a little heart here and then I thought perhaps I'd add a couple of little lines to separate the two quotes thinking I was going with a heart theme I started to add a couple more little hearts and then I changed my mind and wipe it all out with a baby wipe <laughs> you can see could have worked but I changed my mind so you can see I've kept the little heart and now I'm going to show you uh, these are the flowers that I've cut out. You could use other dyes, depends what you've got in your collection. Uh, it'd be difficult to punch uh, this chipboard with normal punches so it's definitely going to be cutting with a die but it could be different flower dyes that you might have. This is the Tim Holtz Tattered Florals and Tattered Leaves and I'm using the smallest flower and the daisy and what I term the rose shaped leaf for this project and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring those to life. You can see this is where I decided to add the little flowers in between the two quotes on my canvas. I think I'm going to get five in there. I decided I wanted to add just the tiniest touch of colour to my two larger words. You can see I had a little tester here to see if it's going to work and I'm going to be using the 
a sort of rose color it doesn't actually have a color it has a number it's from the red and yellow yeah red and yellow set of chalk pastels or pastel pencils and this is color 226 and I'm going or coloring in each of the letters you can see it looks a little bit red here but it matches the sort of pinky color of my sweatshirt who knew <laughs> And then I'm going to speed things up and zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing to create this effect. I'm also colouring in the little heart shape and the word adventures. You can see I've speeded up a little bit here. You can see when I'm concentrating, my fringe appears more and more in the photographs. I know that I've told you that thousands of times before, but I always take the time to check my roots and make sure that I don't need to do my hair again. <laughs> I think I'm doing okay at the minute, not too many greys showing. <laughs> and then I'm going over the red with an eraser pencil, also from Faber-Castell. Normally you would use it to remove the chalk pastels, but I'm just using it to smudge the chalk pastels. And then I'm going back over with the white and then lightly smudging it with the eraser. And that gives the effect, you can see that it goes more pinky now because I'm smudging one color with the other. So the white is blending down into the pink color and lightening that, getting rid of the dust, also doing a little heart shape and then I just wanted to add that texture back in. You can see the fine dots of the back of this canvas. I quite liked the look of that on these words so I'm going back over the white once I've finished. So again blending out the pink with the eraser Coming back in with the white. And then blending out with the eraser. I'm going to use some of this pink on my flowers as well, so it'll bring it into the or onto the outside of the canvas, and then back in with the very, very lightly with the white. So you can see it really is a real hint of pink and I think too drastic, just a little touch of colour. If you wanted it darker, you could do it darker if you wanted to. Look how messy my nails are on this. <laughs> I think I'm going to have that black paint hanging about for quite some time. So now I'm going to go around the edge of each of the flowers that I'll be using on this canvas. And the steps are to go around the flower and adding the detail once with the white, smudging it out, then going back over with the red and then blending those two together with the eraser. So exactly the same steps as the lettering and then going back over for emphasis with the white. So this should give me a slightly pinky shade of flower which I think you can see there and then I'm just shaping it by pushing the end of a pencil into my cupped palm to shape the flower. So over once with the white and smudging, then with the pink and smudging with the eraser and then back over for that final bit of emphasis with the white. So I'm going to do that on all of the small flowers, pushing it into the centre of my hand with the end of a pencil. So for the leaves again I'm just going to go around the outside edge and smudge add the vein in the middle and smudge and then back over with that final application of the pastel and then shaping the leaf with my fingertips. So sort of S shape on the leaves and then for the daisies I'm doing one where I'm smudging it and one where I'm not smudging it. <laughs> so this is a smudgy one and I'm using two of the daisies to create one flower. So that was my smudgy and I'm pushing up in the center and then curving the petals over. So it sort of makes them into a little cup shape. 
and for this one I'm not smudging and just shaping. And then one will sit on top of the other and then onto my frame. So you can see how the pieces are taking shape. So pink on the little flowers and the big flowers are all white. And then once you've got all your pieces, you're ready to hot glue or perhaps use silicone glue or any other kind of glue to stick them to your frame. So I'm doubling up the daisy, sort of slightly offsetting one on top of the other. I'm cutting the little stems off the leaves and then tucking them under the daisies. And I'm using this on all four corners. So in total, I had two, four, six, eight of the large daisies and eight of the rose leaves. And then I had five of the little flowers. And that will finish off my canvas, all but the final detail. And I'm just panicking a bit now because I forgot to bring in the dimensional paint that I used to create the centres of my flowers. But you will find it definitely on the list of things that I use, products that I used over on the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft blog. I'm tempted to say it's Texture Lux. For that, no, I think that's actually the paste. It's definitely the silver colour that I'm going to be using. It's a lovely pearly finish and it dries to a dimensional finish hoping to get a glimpse of it as I put it into the centre of these flowers. It's me leaning over for it. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be able to read what it's called because I've got my hands over it. So I've got one more voiceover left, so I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to stop there so I can go and have a look what that's called. They're called Texture Gems, and this is the silver one. And I'm just putting a little dot in each of my flowers, a little dot on that little string of hearts that separate the word adventures and bring you, and then a lovely swirly blob in the centre of each of my daisies. And it just adds that final little bit of texture and a subtle pearly sheen to the centres of my flowers. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this look at mixing and matching my uh, gorgeous Faber-Castell products to achieve this chalkboard look and a gorgeous inspirational canvas for you to make to inspire you through the new year. And there the canvas is finished. You can see that pink to a treat now. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button. That will be a great big help to me. And thank you very much. I'd also like to thank you for your support throughout 2015. And I look forward to creating with you in 2016. And I really hope you have a great time tonight and really bring in the new year in style. I definitely will be trying to do that with my family and I wish you and your family a happy new year and lots and lots of time to craft in 2016. Until then, thank you for watching.